Hi everyone, take a look at this picture that you will have seen probably on the thumbnail. I haven't done the thumbnail yet, but I probably will put this on it. And this is a really good example of what this video is about. And I'm talking about top end brands. I am going to be covering the likes of Coach and Michael Kors um, and Aspinall of London because they all do it. But I'm actually going to be talking more about the brands like Dior, Louis Vuitton, Fendi, Valentino, those levels of brands that go seem to go and look at popular bags from their competitors and then either copy it, which in my opinion, Valentino here have copied. To me, it, it just looks like a complete copy. But in some other instances, they haven't copied, but they've got very, very close to it. And I'm gonna talk about why I think they do it. Actually, it's not just negative aspects there are some positive aspects to them doing it as well i'm going to pull in what you think because earlier today take a look at this post which you only will have seen if you're subscribed i think that's the way it works but it was a community post i put up asking you what you all thought and i had so many of you um, offering your thoughts and giving examples of bags you knew of that were outright copies in some instances and I'm going to tell you what I think about it all at the end. Let's have a look at some of these examples. The first one and this is the thing I'm trying to say just because it's a dupe or a copy doesn't mean that the copied version is not pleasant. Actually in a lot of cases the copied version is sometimes nicer than the original. This is an example for me where I personally think this. This is um, a Balmain handbag that I showed you a couple of weeks ago. I love this bag and to me this is a dupe of the Bottega Jody bag. The bag from Balmain is new out and the actual style of it and the vibe of it is really really similar but I think they've done it they I think they've done a couple of things and they've done it better. First of all the price very often not with everything but with some of the dupe bags I'm going to tell you about the price is actually less so you can get that look of bag without actually paying like the big money the price of this is around about a thousand pounds I think it is a thousand and fifty currently um, I will say I actually did a video with Farfetch weeks ago now and they gave me a code that expires on the 28th January and it gets you a discount on this bag bringing it to 945 is what I paid that code also well I don't know why this is side topic but it also works on Saleron um, and I only knew that because loads of you have been telling me and my mind's blown because I thought discounts on that brand were over but anyway in my opinion a dupe and the Jody bag has got downsides to it that I've told you about. Opening and closing it, it's a real annoyance. If you don't close it because it's frustrating to do so, your stuff spills out of it. But also, moreover, the cost of that bag, in my opinion, is at a point that I wouldn't buy it for now. It's 1,700, just a bit over. So if you compare it to Balmain, all comes down to personal taste and it comes down to your brand preference and moniker. You mentioned branding and I'm going to read out your comment in a moment because you made such a good point about it. Next examples are the Louis Vuitton Capucines combined with the Fendi Peekaboo combined with the Hermes Kelly. And the reason why these are all similar is they've all got that trapeze shape to them. I've actually put a star by this on my list because in my mind that it's not an exact copy. And the reason for that is with the Valentino one, you can see they've gone ahead and they've taken the shape of the Constance and the placement of the logo and the shape of the Kelly and etc. And they've made a couple of bags that look the same. With these bags that you're seeing here, the only similar thing through my eyes is the shape. And the reason why it's really hard to fully say that these are copies is because that shape is a classic 1950s handbag shape. They were the styles of handbags around at the time and so for anyone to replicate that shape to me isn't copying it. I'm just um, editing this and I've got to say now I feel really confused because I don't know I'm looking at the three bags and they do look the same and I can't figure out whether it's strategic and they're all trying to imitate the, um, the Hermes Kelly, or whether it is just that it, that vintage shape is a standard 
vintage shape that's existed for decades and whether it's just that and I would love it actually if in the comments you could let me know what you think because how do you feel about it? Do you feel confused or do you look at it and you're like, yeah, it's a complete copy or do you look at it and you think, well, no, it's just that that shape of bag exists and it has done for years. But I tell you what is copying it. Have a look at this. My mind's blown. I need to show you something in one second to demonstrate this. This is from Michael Kors and it's the Carly bag. And have a look at this. This bag to me looks exactly like the Palais tote from uh, Louis Vuitton and if you have a look at the handle on the Michael Kors can you see it's like a plaited piece of leather well that plaited design isn't actually on the Palais bag but it is on a bag I can't stand you know I've told you about this it's the Louis Vuitton artsy bag and have a look at that it's the same thing uh, do you know why I find the copying or replication or the getting really close to the designs of other bags annoying. It's just boring and everything becomes the same as everything else and um, you know for a long time, I'm not sure how many of you feel the same way, but for, for like a really long time, ever since before Covid actually or when Covid started, the designs coming out from fashion houses, in my opinion, are quite boring particularly like I love Dior but Dior recently there has just been nothing in there and nothing fresh nothing new nothing like the designs that were coming out in 2019 and before where they had really like you would go in there and there would be something nice every time but in the last two years it's been I feel like a regurgitation of the same old stuff and they have got the new collection out now with this new bag and I've had lots of you asking me for my opinion on it. Personally for me, I don't like it. It's just like, that's my personal taste. But it's so hard to find something that looks fresh and that looks new. Why do I think they do it? Oh, by the way, have a look as well at this uh, new monogram from uh, Balmain, which is, I had loads of you telling me this, it looks just like the Fendi monogram as well. I, um, Got to say though, I like it. Yeah, it looks, it looks like a ripoff actually. That I'm surprised that that Balmain as a brand went down that route, that route because they're really, um, I think they're really leading in terms of knowing their own style, having their own style, and sticking to it. And when I saw that print on these boots, which are stunning actually. When I saw that print, I thought, I'm keeping the boots because they're so nice, but definitely that print is a Fendi inspiration, shall we say. A lot of you, when I asked the question, in addition to pitching forward your, um, your thoughts on bags that looked the same, and I actually had a lot of you telling me about Coach. I think it's called the Cassie bag. It's a flap bag that looks just like the Louis Vuitton Pochette Métisse. But Anne, Anne Hans, you, I love you, you're always commenting on the channel and you're so nice. And you raised a really good point, which actually is something I didn't know. And you said that Coach had that design way before Louis Vuitton came out with the Pochette Métisse. So that was quite an interesting one. But this point from Monica, Monica raises a great point and it says, I think the real question is why does the logo matter on these bags? Are we in love with the shape and function of the bag or simply the logo attached to the bag? Because all of these dupes are really functioning the same purpose as mainstream creative houses. I completely agree with that. Have a think about this and think about how it works with you. As human beings, particularly in the West where we have all of our excessive and stuff we don't need, but if you think about yourself, the brands that you choose to wear, the brand of car you choose to drive, the supermarket that you shop from, all of those things say something about you. And you even have brands like Dacia, who are a car brand, and their whole concept of around their brand is that they are for people who reject brands, who don't want to align with different brand strategies and different brand values. And so 
even for the kind of person that would buy into such a brand, they that's a statement that they are saying about themselves. They might be saying, I reject brands. I don't care what, uh, what I wear or where I shop from or the car I drive. This is kind of me. These are my ethics. And Monica, I think that's why we all pick individual brands because in a way it says something about us. One of you actually a while ago said to me, I never really thought about it before, but I am Chanel, Audi and Waitrose. Think about it. I also had the comment from Tom and Amanda and it see, it, you say it seems like everyone came out with their version of the LV Pochette Matisse when it came out. Coach specifically comes to mind. And that is actually where Anne, you say Coach, the Coach bag was way older than Louis Vuitton's. They came out with the original design. Often we assume that it's the major, big, top end, really luxury brands that are getting cop copied, but actually it's not always the case. Sometimes those big brands see the small ones, see something they're doing well and, and can pinch that for their own. AB, you also mentioned a really good point, which is that Zara, Zara are always very on top of replicating and coming up with dupes for the latest stuff that's on the runway and that's a really good point that you made. Fun Lux, you actually came up with a bag and it's the Coach Rogue 25 and you said this looks like it has been inspired by the Lady Dior and when I saw it I would be, I would completely agree. What do I think? You might be quite surprised because I have a positive and a negative thought on this. My positives are that I think it's a good thing and I think it's a good thing because it allows options and opportunities to everyone. Anyone who wants to own any of these bags, who aspires to it, whether you are still working your way up or whether you want a certain bag but you're like, I'm never going to spend that money on it. I think the benefit to this is that there are options out there that share the same silhouette, very similar designs, and you can go and buy those and they're going to cost you under 800 pounds as opposed to spending thousands so that's why i think it's a really good thing when it comes to the negative the the one big thing for me i feel it's lazy designing it shows that the designers don't have many ideas like you, everything these days looks the same and you know when you think I want to see something fresh I want to see something new I want to see something tempting that's different and just when a brand comes out with something that's tempting and different like Bottega for example you get other brands that jump on the back of it and on one hand I think it's really good like with the Balmain bag I think it's really good because you can go and buy that style of bag for way less but at the same time it, it is boring you think yeah it's kind of boring everything kind of looks a bit the same and I want something different and I want something fresh Hi everyone, welcome to part three of the mail time. If you're not sure what mail time is, it's become a thing. It's where I will put my PO box address below and it's basically become this thing where some of you in the early days on YouTube, I've been doing YouTube since 2012, some of you started writing to me and I started reading out your letters and then it snowballed into this big thing. So that's what it is. And I'm doing this in separate parts because I actually got a lot of mail this time. So if you're not included in this video, go and check out part one and two and hold on for part four because you might even be included in that. This, let me have a read of this. If you don't ever want your letter read out, please write that on your letter and I won't read it out. This is from Ivy and I believe Ivy that I can read this out because you haven't written anything um, on it to say not but you've put dearest Sophie I hope you are doing well and in health I've been watching your videos for nearly three years now they're amazing and inspiring and I love the mail time part I've been meaning to write to you but my shyness always gets in the way. One day I went through some stuff and I found myself writing pads that I used to use when writing to my friends. I loved writing letters and posting them and getting all excited when I received one in the post. Everything was put on hold when all of a sudden all communication became digital. I really miss those times when myself and my friends used to exchange letters, especially when most of them lived abroad. 
Now they're all just a memory. That's why when I saw your video and saw that you read your letters and that you send a reply card, that had you inspired to write again. So here I am, you've put. I'm originally from the Philippines. I came here in January 2004 and uh, to work and I li I've lived here since. Although I still go home twice a year to see my family and friends, annoyingly I have not been able to since the craziness started and stopped the world somehow with COVID. I'm an intensive care nurse specialist. I work, I work for the NHS as well as the private hospitals all over London and the West Midlands. I've never been so exhausted, drained and battered as I have been in the past two years. I'm glad it has calmed down now. It's hard work being in this profession. You put yourself at risk and never get compensated well enough. I've never understood why nurses and carers, why they don't get paid more. I've never ever understood it. I can't see, can't see what the problem is. Like you, you guys do such a hard job and I've never, like a friend of mine actually, we had a conversation about this a while ago and we were like, you know, with the tax that we all pay, why can't, why can't NHS workers particularly nurses and cleaners and care staff, why can't they just be paid more? I, I will it, honestly, the mind is baffled. You say that from a fulfillment point of view, you like to reward yourself from time to time with nice things. I love designer items. I have a few since I started investing in them in 2008. I bought most of my things from Harrods. It's my favorite place to go shopping and I've collected points too. However, when I discovered Vestaire, I bought from there and also sold through there already. I recently saw this shop as I was watching, oh, you saw Luxury Promise, which is a shop in London. And I was surprised when you featured one in your vlog. I was actually looking at the vintage Chanel bags that you ended up swapping with one of yours. It's funny because we have the same things in common and it's incredible that we go to some of the same places just not at the same time. That's such a lovely letter. Thank you so much, Ivy. And you have put your address on here. So I will write back to you. Thank you very much. And then the final one that I'm gonna do is from Donna. Now, Donna and Karen, and I know that sounds funny because it's like the designer, Donna Karen. Uh, no, but seriously, Donna and Karen, Thank you both so much for your letters recently and I apologise for not writing back yet. I have got your letters and I am in the process of writing back because I, weirdly, I have a few cards and letters from both of you um, that, have, that what's happened is they've all come through at the same time. So I'm not joking, I think I've got, from one of you, I've got like five cards that have all come through at the same time and I, I need to, I'm gonna go and read them and then write back to you. But this is a card that turned up a uh, couple of days ago, so I'm gonna read this now. And this is from Donna, and this is a lovely card. That's a really nice card, isn't it? Sparkly. And it says, this is a happy birthday card. This is the crazy thing about that PO box, you know this, is very few things turn up real time. Most stuff turns up weeks later, like months later, and I don't understand why this is a birthday card that's come through in January. Literally turned up a couple of days ago, but anyway, thank you all the same. Happy birthday, Sophie. I hope you and your family have a wonderful time celebrating. You deserve it. Much love, Donna and Miracle, which I think is your new pet, because Donna used to have two doggies called Peanut and Pepper, um, and they sadly passed away. And do you know what, Donna? I can sympathize with that because losing a pet is the most painful thing. I mean, losing anyone is painful, but losing a pet's re actually really difficult. I've always found it really difficult. So thank you all so much. Remember, if you haven't been read out in this and if you've written, um, check back and check those other videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.